we're gonna take a look at Google Trends and how to use it for keyword research and just having an understanding of how popular keywords are. You could even use it for a little brainstorming. So let's get to the demo right now. I'm Doug Cunnington. I talk about Amazon affiliate sites and project management. So take a look around the channel. If you like what you see, please subscribe. We're looking at Google Trends right now. This is just like the home page here in you can get insights on what's going on, what's trending right now. So they have featured insights at the top. And as you scroll down, you can see the stories that are trending over like the last 24 hours here. You can potentially, you know, have an idea of like what people are searching for and maybe, right, it would be hard, but maybe you could create some sort of viral content based on what's popular. Now, that's not really my style because you have to continually search search for stuff, create more content and chase things around. But if you have some insight, for example, on like, you know, a movie is coming out in several months and you could sort of plan for when it's going to be popular, then that could be interesting. And this could give you like further insight. So potentially you could do research on previous movies that have been released or whatever current event may be coming up. Maybe it's an event and then you could have content out in the right time period, right? So one thing that we see is Coachella 2018 and that is telling us that this time of year people are searching for Coachella 2018 so if you knew that and you looked at the trends over the past couple years which I'll click on it and see what, what we see here but if you understand that you could have content published ahead of time so that when this hits for 2019 2020 and so on you have content in place and you can serve the searchers so let's see what we have so they talk about uh, Coachella 2018 and they're giving us a little information which is interesting and here is search interest in Coachella headliner. So it's really giving us a, a suite of information and gives us a pretty good idea of what, what people search for. So that said, I'm going to try and find the trend, right? So we see here back to 2014. So this is the historical graph is what we see here. And this is insightful, right? So we see two spikes primarily, and it looks like there's potentially a spike in, you know, roughly this time frame when we're uh, like leading up to it. So, or sorry, when we're leading up to the announcement, I, I would suspect. And then further, you know, around April, there's even more information and it looks like there's a spike. So every year, February and April is when there is a spike in the searches for Coachella. And what we could see is they tell us it reached an all-time high in April of 2012 and the annual festival was founded in 1999. So pretty interesting information. And this is a way that you could use Google Trends to you know, understand the seasonal type trends for specific events, right? And you can bring it down to a specific you know, niche site or affiliate marketing example. We'll take a look at that in a second, so be sure to stick around. Now, another thing I wanna point out is you can go to like top charts and they have different categories. And then you can select you know, whatever country you want to look at. You could look at, you know, specific years or months or whatever. So we can maybe look at 2017, the entire year, and then we have our categories listed. So that's kind of interesting. Further, you can go to categories and maybe we just want to focus on, say, nature and um, science, and then we'll see pretty interesting stuff. I'm a little surprised we don't see much about solar eclipse here in the U.S., I went to go see the total solar eclipse down in Idaho and it was amazing, by the way. So we don't see any of that here, but the point is you could sort and look through this data however you want, right? So you can look historically, 2008, the entire year, what were the most popular trending actors, right? Miley Cyrus, interesting, who knew? Right. Okay. So moving on, bringing it down to a specific example that we maybe can use a little bit more for affiliate marketing. We'll look at something seasonal. We're going to look at Christmas lights. Now I'm going to get rid of this term here. I was doing a little uh, prep ahead of time. So we're removing fireworks. We're just looking at Christmas lights and you can see most of the time people are not searching for Christmas lights very much. But we see around October, it starts to go up. People are looking. And then in November, it goes up a lot. And then in December, it goes up 
for a little while and then it starts dropping in the middle of the month and then it, it drops off like crazy last week of the year. So one thing you can do is look at, say, the past five years. You could put in a custom range, but obviously we'll probably see that every year there's a spike, pretty similar spike. You can see it goes up and then it drops a little bit and it goes back up and then goes back. And each year it seems to be getting a little bit higher. And, and what this chart is, the interest over time, it's sort of relative to itself. So 100% is like the maximum observed. And we could see here over the past five years, seems to have been most popular in 2017. So it was quite popular. 2016 wasn't quite as uh, like search for, but 2015 was pretty high. So you could kind of get an idea based on that, that it's a, a rising trend. Even though we have the seasonal spikes, it is a rising trend. Now we could even go back to 2004, and I suspect that it's generally a rising trend too if you were to smooth this out. Now what does this really tell us? If you have a seasonal product like Christmas lights, I tried to pick an example that wasn't someone's niche specifically, but if you have a seasonal type site, you can really have a good understanding on like how popular a certain thing is going to be. So if we look at the last 12 months, we can see just in general, people are not searching for Christmas lights for most of the year, but it spikes. So it doesn't mean it's bad to approach a seasonal niche. It just means you have to understand what to expect. And you would want to probably balance your portfolio or the products that you are reviewing by having different things that have a, you know, a different season that they're popular, like fireworks. This is sort of an arbitrary example, so I don't know if it applies much, but we could see in the US, usually around July 4th, fireworks get really darn popular, right? So that is the Independence Day celebration. Fireworks are really popular. And when you look at the number of searches, Christmas lights versus fireworks, you can see that fireworks are way more popular most of the time than um, Christmas lights. Not most of the time, but the spikes are higher. So we see here, you could compare two things together. And when we look at Christmas lights, it only gets up to an 11 on the scale, right? Versus the 100%. So that just means a lot more people in the seasonal way search for, you know, fireworks in the July 4th time frame than people do in the you know Christmas time frame. Now it doesn't mean that um, you know fireworks are way more popular necessarily. One would have to go look at the deeper information using keyword research tools like keyword CAG, for example, to understand how much people are searching. And what you can sort of gather from this kind of information is with the keyword research tools, they are using averages, right? So they use an average for the overall searches over time. Different tools use different algorithms. Some use a 12 month average, others use like a 30 month average or whatever, right? They could use whatever they want. But if you have like that information and then you can see how many searches people have on this trend line, you could kind of get an idea if there's like a spike in some portion of the year or something like that. These are extreme examples for a reason, right? I wanted to see the spikes here. Now, the other cool thing that you can do with Google Trends is you'll see related queries, right? So they give us some information about the Christmas lights and the fireworks and stuff, but then they also tell us related searches for each one. So we have Christmas lights and then 4th of July fireworks near me, like what people are searching for. Christmas lights near me and 4th of July fireworks near me indicate people want to go to an event, right? This is more event driven versus anything else. There's a lot of additional information here. So leave a comment um, if you want me to go deeper in certain areas. Like for example, you can look at interest by sub region. So you could like dive into metro areas, right? So you can go a little bit deeper and see how the searches vary by geography. So if you're doing like local SEO or something like that, this may come into play a little bit more. If you're just doing niche sites, it doesn't apply as much. But at this point, we can see, you know, interest by city may be useful, not, not for us, but Atlanta, where I, I used to live, and they have more specific Christmas lights that people are looking for or fireworks, right? Before we go to the next part, quick question for you. Do you use Google Trends? And if so, tell me in the comments how you use it. I'm always looking to learn more. And by the way, everybody, be sure you take a look at the comments because some of the best ideas do come directly from the audience. 
it's really interesting how these things sort of play together and you could find maybe correlations that don't exist. You could find sort of trends that are related to each other and you could find interesting stuff. Now, again, for these, I try not to out anyone's niche or anything like that. But when you look at, let's back out of the geography just to make sure we'll just do US. You can look at these other related queries and maybe get an idea right, for keywords to look up to see if they make sense for you to go after them. Now, again, these are arbitrary examples that are not product related directly, but you can still get a good idea. By the way, you could download, you know, the list here, a CSV, rising versus top. So I think rising indicates the trend is moving up. Top is like what is, you know, most popular. So LED lights, right? So that is kind of product driven, best Christmas lights. So those are sort of keywords that are approachable potentially for a niche site. Overall, I would say Google Trends is a really interesting way to get information on the trend of how popular your search is, especially over time, right? So a lot of times people are worried about going after a niche that is dying and you can get an idea. Let's get rid of uh, Christmas lights and see what fireworks have done over time. So if you saw this, if you ignore the spikes, if you average this out, this would seem okay. It doesn't look like it's declining, but every now and then people are worried, like, am I going after a niche that's just gonna go away? So if you look at Google Trends over time, you can get an idea, you know, since 2004 is when they have data and you can see like either it's growing or it's getting small. So for this fireworks, it's growing, right? You can see over time, there are roughly twice as many people searching for fireworks information than there were in 2004. So you can get an idea about that. You could also do some brainstorming, like I said, if you're looking at Google Trends, the homepage, and you're like wondering like some big things that are coming up, you could look at that sort of information, stories that are trending right now. So that's interesting, very cool. It varies all over the place. So you could look at different categories if you wanted to. So let's just look at business really quick. Business type articles and what's trending over the last 24 hours. And you could, again, switch countries if you want to. So it's kind of cool to do that sort of research, just do general brainstorming to get an idea what's out there. And then further, if you want to, you know, look at historical information, you know, maybe for content, if you're looking for informational content, this could be an interesting way to do research, perhaps. You can look back at historical data and reference that, you know, Michael Jordan and Michael Phelps were searched for, like they were the two most searched for people in 2008, stuff like that. So very interesting way, you know, when you couple this sort of trend information with what you could find out in, you know, keyword research tools, that could be pretty powerful to understand what people are searching for, how many people are searching for on a monthly basis, and the overall trend of the niche. So again, if you have any questions, let me know if there's an area you want me to go deeper. Let me know in the comments and perhaps it'll be a topic for a new video.